Just a telescope my body's never seen And every generation helped me build this new machine it, it, It's moving parts of people and these cameras help it see And it's connecting everything in secret circuitry But this machine's too big for you to see For me, the Australian Poster Bike Challenge is exactly that, just a challenge in itself. Covering Australia, three and a half thousand kilometres, seeing some parts of Australia that people just won't ever see, at a speed that's different to your daily ride, and meeting other like-minded people, staying out overnight, camping, and the hospitality of your people in the outback of Australia, just generally fantastic. It's a challenge, that's what it's there for. If it wasn't a challenge, it would be a day ride. This next ride will be my sixth ride and currently I've covered basically from Brisbane to Cairns via Outback Queensland, Brisbane to Melbourne via Western New South Wales, Brisbane to Darwin, Brisbane to Alice Springs and Perth to Broome and now we're going to go Hobart to Alice Springs via Udnadatta and uh, a lot of the Flinders Ranges in Outback Australia. Why do I do this? It's a question everyone asks. They always say, you must be nuts. Well, life's an adventure and why not take an adventure when you can? It's also about seeing Australia and meeting new people. Australia's a big country and no one sees every part of it. So it's a challenge. You're going out, you're adventuring, you're seeing sights and yeah, it's always a challenge and adventure. The Australian Posty Bike Challenge uses the Australian Posty Bike. You can't beat it. It's a little Honda CT 110, four speed centrifugal clutch. They're designed to run all day. They're designed to be mistreated. And these are just the perfect little bike. To kill one, very hard to do. It does happen, but generally most of the bikes will come back in one piece. Of course, there's got to be doubts. It's been a long time since I've been riding on dirt and particularly on a long ride like this. It, took a, a while for me to get the hang of riding back onto dirt and thankfully I had a couple of guys with me who were experienced dirt riders. Riding on these kind of events you're seeing something new maybe every hour, maybe every day and you've got to be able to accept that challenge. If it's raining you've got to ride, if it's snowing you've got to ride, if there's mud you've got to ride. You can't stop, you can't turn around, you can't go back. So listen to the people who were around me build the confidence back up and then basically from there it was all guns blazing and, and going forward. Scariest moments, well, on the Posty Challenge we've had a, had a few accidents over the years, but that's sort of part of the challenge as well. We've got people that haven't ridden these kind of roads and aren't used to it and probably going a little bit out of their safety comfort zone. The worst one was coming across a, a rider who had fallen off literally only minutes before we'd gone, come through. Uh, he was off the bike and was struggling to stand up and all he wanted to do was get back on the bike. Uh, he was in a pretty bad way and if we grabbed him, got him off the road, I had to send two riders forward to get some help. In a very quick moment you can go from having the great time of your life to having an absolute tragedy. And thankfully the guy's alive, well, kicking and uh, has recovered quite well. Funniest moment. Oh. Okay, plenty of funnier moments. Uh, going to Melbourne a few years back, on the last night, one of the New Zealand cousins was uh, 
a bit of a, a loud mouth and during the night someone found his bike and we hoisted it up a tree about six feet and subsequently in the morning he came out to find his bike up a tree so his payback was to take the kickstands off every other bike and hide them on the oval we were staying at so you had to go and actually find your kickstarter to get onto the bike uh, other time was falling off in the snow I was the year we went to Melbourne I was the first rider to actually come across snow and didn't quite take the conditions as well as I thought maybe a little bit too fast maybe a bit excited to see the snow and subsequently came off the bike and landed into a pile of snow on the side of the road and it was like landing on a waterbed and you sort of hit and fell and drifted down and the whole time I thought that's the best accident you could ever have until you stood up and then realized you're now full of snow and water and it was cold and I had to ride like that for the rest of the day, about 150 oh, kilometres. So by the time we got in to where we were staying that night, I was quite happy to, to find a hot shower and a warm bed. But generally funny moments are around the campfires at night, talking to the local people. The local people really love us. They've got some great stories to tell. And the people you meet on the way, everyone's got a story and it's, it takes, it takes a bit of time to learn about people and once you learn them you understand why everyone's doing these things so it, it's funny it's scary it's it's everything all rolled into one the people that take part in this event come from not just australia but pretty much from all over the world we've got riders coming in from from england california america san francisco new zealand indonesia We've got a South African guy from last year, but a lot of people are Australian and they just come to basically do these events to ride around Australia and see why Australia is such a great country. Greatest thing? Oh, probably the best best adventure part of the entire ride was coming through the Daintree after the trip up uh, through Cairns. We got onto the Bloomfield track and basically came down and we were crossing flooded creeks and there was always the joke about oh, watch out for the crocodiles and we didn't pay any heed to it and subsequently on either side of us there were crocodiles and we're riding along and we're looking and we're looking and then we come out the other side and it's all rainforest and there's rainforest and then you've got the ocean and you're looking out and you think well this is just fantastic well, I've got crocodiles behind me I've got crocodiles on the beach and it's just gorgeous it's just physically fantastic um, other times riding into the snow, that was a, a real buzz. Um, for me personally, I'd never seen snow until this ride. And riding down into Tumbarumba and just looking out across the snowy mountains and, and then physically the next day going through Karumba and into Jindabyne and seeing the snow on the side of the road. And you're physically riding through open fresh cut snow, it was just brilliant. Coming into Birdsville after the big floods in Queensland from a few years ago, the waters had finally come down to Birdsville and it was the first time in about 20 years the entire area or part of the Diamond Tia Shire had all been covered in water. And you're riding into Birdsville and there's red sand dunes and there's big red, the biggest sand dune in Australia and everything was just covered in wildflower the whole way. And to ride in and know that this event of the wildflowers won't happen for another 20 years was just fantastic and either way the whole way we're riding there was water next to us and the wildlife and the birds were coming in on their way to Lake Eyre and yeah you just don't realize how big Australia is to think it took six months for the water to come down to Birdsville to get this thing to happen it was just just mind-blowing on the on the postie bike you've got to be single-minded basically you've got to be able to concentrate for up to eight nine hours a day while you're sitting on these little bikes traveling at about 70 kilometers an hour we have our ride sheet for the day, we know where we're going, we know how to get there, but it doesn't stop the boredom that comes between point A and point B or point C. So there's a few things you've got to do along the way to keep your brain active. Uh, keeping your fingers moving on the, on the handlebars, mo moving your feet, but you also got to think of things. What I do is I think of things from years ago or I think of something else and get my mind off just sitting on a bike at 70 k's minute after minute hour after hour but the other hand is every minute you're getting closer to your destination so that's a positive and i look at the positive side of it a few of us have designed a few things where we start synchronize our riding on open stretches where there's no traffic coming obviously and you do a few maneuvers and it just keeps your your brain and mentally alert you find the people that just sit and look at the white line will fall asleep and you can spot them they will drift in and out and they tend to drift a little bit wider and a little bit wider as the day goes on. If you can stop every hour, get off, walk around the bike, 
you know, get something to eat, something to drink, stay fresh, don't overheat, you're pretty much on the money. Post your bike challenge beneficiaries, well every community we stay at along the way basically benefits from us turning up. We've got 50 riders and six support crew and they all need to be fed and watered. So the community, the local PNC, the little athletics, the soccer club, the swim club who look after us for the night, whoever it may be, we basically pay them money to look after it. So they provide us our dinner, our lunch and our breakfast for the next day. And some of these little communities we go to, we're the only event that turns up for the entire year. So we're basically their major fundraiser for the year. But the big beneficiary from it all is Rotary Australia. At the end of each event, we donate our bikes. Well, most of us donate our bikes. Some people grow too attached to the bikes and want to keep them. We donate the bike to Rotary. Rotary then on-sell the bike or auction them off, and the money they raise from that goes to their projects. Their biggest one is ridding the world of polio. Uh, a bike from a few years ago when I did the Darwin ride ended up in East Timor and is used by the medical research up there and the midwives, and uh, they use the bikes as their main source of transportation into the rural community. So everyone benefits along the way, and on the way our beneficiary is us. We enjoy it we see more of Australia than most people and we have a ball doing it. The biggest advice or, or tip I can give anyone who wants to do the posty bike challenge is be prepared. Don't think it's just a follow the leader type of event. You're navigating as you ride. But the main thing is listen to people who have done it before. They've been there, they know what to expect, they know how the event runs. Little bits of advice make a huge difference. If you're unsure, ask a question, whether it be another mechanic, or a rider, find out what it's all about. Little tips make a big difference. The last thing you want to do is literally fall on your ass and wear the right gear. Being prepared and being able to cope with the boredom of riding in some of these conditions, if you can handle all those, you'll have a great time on the event.